Now we're going to work on a very basic parabolic motion problem. Parabolic motion is also called ballistics, and I bet that's familiar to some of you. A ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second from a height of 720 feet. Its height h in feet after t seconds is given by this formula right here. This is the formula just for the ball in this story. After how long will the ball reach the ground? Okay. There's a general formula for all parabolic motion problems. And here it is. There are actually many, many formulas. If you take physics, you'll find out more about them. But right now, this is the one we're dealing with. h of t equals a times t squared plus v naught times t plus h naught. And we're going to talk about what each of those letters and numbers mean. h of t is the height above the ground at any time t after the ball is released. A is the acceleration of gravity. It's a negative number that indicates the effect of gravity on the ball, which is always down, down, down. V naught, V sub zero, is the initial velocity. It's a number. This is not a variable. Anytime you see a little zero, down beside the letter, it means that this is, is not a variable, it's a number. And what this number is going to represent, or actually be, is the initial velocity, the speed at which the ball is thrown up. If the ball is just dropped, then v naught would be zero. But it's not. This is actually thrown up at a speed of 64 feet per second. H naught is the, the initial height above the ground, where the ball starts, or the missile starts, or the fireworks start. Note the little zero on the lower right hand side means in the beginning. So think of it that way. In fact, it's a zero, but think of it as an O, which means original. That's one way to remember this. OK, so here's our formula. h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 720. Negative 16 feet per second is the effect that gravity has on anything that's thrown up if you're measuring it in feet per second. Now, where this zero comes from is, you have to ask yourself, self, how high is that ball above the ground when it hits the ground? Well, it's zero feet above the ground. So zero goes here. And we now have a quadratic equation that we have to solve. 16 is the greatest common value of these three terms. But there's another rule. When the leading term, the leading coefficient, is negative, then your GCF must be negative, which is why I'm about to do what I'm about to do, which is this. Negative 16 t squared plus negative 16 times negative 4t plus negative 16 times negative 45. I have to take a negative 16 out of each term. But this is positive 64. So I have to make sure that whatever two numbers I multiply have got to be positive 64. That is, when I multiply them, I have to get the answer positive 64. And negative times negative is positive. 
So negative 16 times negative 4 is positive 64. And negative 16 times negative 45 is positive 720. And now I have negative 16 very clearly separated out as the GCF of each term. I pull out the GCF to the front and in parentheses I put the leftovers. T squared, here let's bring this back down, T squared minus 4T minus 45. That's where I get this. Then because I have an equation and I can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. I can divide negative 16 out and get it out of the way. Only when I'm dealing with an equation. So what I'm left with is 0 equals t squared minus 4t minus 45. As you already know from the work you did in factoring, when you have a 1 in front of the t squared, all you have to do is factor the number at the end. And that's what I've done over here. I have factored negative 45 into all the integer pairs that can be multiplied together to get negative 45. And then I have to choose the pair that equals the middle number, negative 4. Well, that's 5 and negative 9. Because when I add 5 and negative 9, I get negative 4. So, I make two sets of parentheses. I put a t here and a t here. And then because 5 is positive 5, I put a plus 5 here. And because 9 is negative 9, I put a minus and a 9 here, and now I have the two binomial factors of t squared minus 4t minus 45. Now I set each factor equal to 0. I solve each little equation, and I come up with solutions t equals negative 5 and t equals positive 9. But I'm looking for time in this problem. I need seconds. What exactly are negative 5 seconds? Well, again, if you take physics, you'll find out there is a purpose for negative time. But we're not going to deal with it now. So we're going to go with the positive 9 seconds, which makes perfect sense. And that's our answer. The ball will reach the ground in 9 seconds. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.